Hello and welcome to the Big Podcast Equipment Guide for 2021, where you will learn what devices you will need to set up a podcast for up to 10 persons participating, including up to four remote guests dialing in. You see, ever since I started to be interested in podcasting, I was desperately looking for a guide that seemingly did not exist. One that tells me what equipment is needed if you want to set up and record a podcast that has more than one person involved. Say, two. Or three. Or what the heck, up to eight people being present. That's fairly easy, by the way. Things get slightly more complicated, though, when you want to add the remote guest. Or two. Or three. Or four. And that's when the confusion usually kicks in. And this is exactly what we will find out, one by one. And by the end of it, hopefully you'll have much more clarity about what you actually need as we tick off one by one each scenario. And this is what this series is all about. In the previous part, we have covered the devices that were, in my view, capable of handling the situations where two persons were present and up to four remote guests were to dial in in the most cost-effective way. Next, we will cover the scenarios where three persons are present while still covering the cases if one, two, three or four remote guests should be interviewed on the show. To shorten the video, I have not included every bit and piece you will need for a certain setup Instead, I have created them online with detailed info as to what and why is needed. You can find the link to that below in the description. There are many ways for an efficient podcast setup. In fact, when preparing for this video, I have listed over 150 different options. However, some simply don't make sense, like buying a Rodecaster Pro for a solo podcast. I've also followed some basic principles with my device choices to ensure good quality and reliable audio recording and also taking care of your hard-earned cash. First, if you want good audio, get a microphone, as with them, you will make a quantum leap in audio quality. You see, there's a reason why in the last hundred years every quality broadcast used a microphone. My setups will always calculate with one for each person present. Second, record everyone to a separate track, otherwise post-production editing will be a nightmare. I will only recommend setups in which this is possible. Third, prefer hardware over software, as software may and will crash. And when it crashes, it will crash right in the middle of that once-in-a-lifetime interview that you can't repeat. Other than that, looking at the subscription prices, I'm not sure it even makes a lot of sense, which leads me to number four, avoid subscriptions when you are a beginner and you can solve it with hardware. Quality services start at 15 to 20 US dollars a month, which will reach the flipping point when compared to investing in a hardware in about a year or two for most beginner podcasters. Hardware is cheaper for beginners and generally, more reliable. And finally, number five, get what you need and not what others have. Don't buy expensive stuff because top podcasters use them. Buy the ones that cover your needs instead. And with that, let's get started. On to the cases when we have three people in the room who may want to talk to uh, remote guests as well. As you can expect, most of my recommendations that could handle three participants in the two present, one remote scenario in the previous video can also handle the cases where three people are present and no remote guests are invited, with the sad exception of the simple but solid USB audio interface, the Focusrite 4i4. Unfortunately, it only has two XLR inputs for microphones, its other two inputs are line level inputs, and line inputs are not designed for microphones. While it is possible to use them and they won't harm your mic, there's simply not enough gain to amplify the microphone's level to the line input. And while I have not mentioned it at the 2 present one remote scenario, the same applies to the Focusrite 8i6 too. None of these guys are good enough for this scenario. Kit prices will of course increase by the additional microphone and the headphone and look like this. First, the Soundcraft Noteback 12FX can still handle the multitrack USB recording for three microphones and since here you don't need the iRig 2 setup as you don't have a remote guest, the additional microphone and headphone didn't even increase the price too much. With the headphone splitter added, it's 564 euros. Second, you could tweak the Zoom H5 as well to record a third person, for instance, by physically placing it in front of the third guest to record it into its XY microphone on the top and make sure you are sitting in a kind of Mercedes star-like order so that none of the mics pick up the other speaker's voice. Also here you'll need a headphone amp, and with that it will cost you 613 euros, but bear in mind 
that there's no third microphone in this price. Three persons in the room recorded with the wonderful Zoom P4 cost 646 euros, with the Anon and Heat and the Behringer Flow 8 multitrack mixers 690 euros. Real close. You can happily plug in all three mics and record everyone on a separate track, while with the Zoom P4 on an SD card with the two mixers via USB into your digital audio workstation. While you can kinda sorta tweak the Zoom H5 to host three guests, if you insist on having a Zoom field recorder, I'd rather go this time with another wildly popular one, the Zoom H6. Instead of two on the H5, it has four XLR inputs, so you can easily plug in a third microphone and record its voice on a separate track. The setup will set you back with 808 euros, unless you are using the XY microphones on the top for one of the guests, in which case it's only 713 euros, but even so it still remains the most expensive option. Again. I would not recommend to buy it for this scenario, but if you happen to have one, you can just as well use it to record three people present. You will also need a headphone amp to accommodate all headphones for the present participants for all but the Zoom Portrack P4, which has four headphone ports built right in. The scene will be very similar to the next setup, where we add a remote guest as well. With the Zoom P4 it's easy. And its biggest trick is that for the very affordable price, it has the mix minus function built right in via phone connection or via USB or both. And this way your guests will not hear themselves echoed back while talking, which is the most important aspect of recording remote guests as discussed in many previous videos. You'll just need to have an additional TRRS cable and quite likely a dongle to be able to plug it into your phone or a USB-C cable, which brings up the crit price to 656 euros. For the Behringer Flow 8, for the Allen and Heat kits, you'll need an IRIC 2 adapter to set up the mix minus. Both setups will cost you 756 euros. As for the Zoom H6, setting up the mix minus for the remote guest is, I'm afraid, just as cumbersome as with the Zoom H5. You can have a look at the drawings on the link at the beginning of the description. The menu and the screen on the H6 are much more advanced and most importantly, it still has the monitor mix feature, which makes it possible to set up for a remote guest, even if not easily and with way too many cables and splitters to my taste. But it works, albeit for 850 euros. Please note that the Soundcraft Notepad 12 effects, while it could theoretically be capable of handling this situation, is not mentioned here, and the reason is that the user manual is not explicitly mentioned of the combo jack on the mic channels to accept unbalanced mono TS cable coming out from the IRIC 2 adapter. Things get slightly more complicated when you want to add the second remote guest for the already three present though. The equipment that lay around in the house anyway will not be enough anymore. You will need specific devices for it, like my surprise favorites, the Behringer Flow 8 and the Zoom L8. The Behringer has four XLR ports, so three guests can easily be hosted as well as two remote guests using two iRig 2s, utilizing the flexibly mixable dual monitor outs. Unfortunately, it only has a single master headphone port, so a splitter for the headphones is also needed. We know very well by now that the Zoom L8 has a TRRS input for a mobile phone with a built-in mix minus, and the second guest can also be easily set up using an iRig 2 and one of the individual output mixes of the three, the Mix A, Mix B and Mix C, See the podcast on the Zoom L8 part in the corner. It does not even need a headphone amp as it still can accommodate the headphones for all present participants. You see the master headphone port is free, but since the first guest gets the voices through the TRRS cable, only the second guest occupies one of the Mix A, Mix B, Mix C outputs. The other two of them can still be used to feed the headphones of the remaining two persons present. The two dedicated podcasting devices, the Rode Roadcaster Pro and the Zoom Podtrack P8, don't really break a sweat dealing with this scenario, as they have built-in mix minus for both guests. Nonetheless, while with the Roadcaster you have the choice whether you want to dial in the second guest via Bluetooth or via USB, the Zoom Podtrack P8 does not give you this choice, and this is a widely overlooked disadvantage over its direct competitor, the Rode. Unfortunately, the Zoom P8 does not have a built-in Bluetooth connection either, so you have to use an extra 50 euro adapter for it, which however occupies the TRRS port, so it's either TRRS or Bluetooth. With the Rode, it can be both, and with the Zoom P8, 
you'll have to have one remote guest over the phone and one over USB connection. I'm sure Zoom did not their homework when they have decided over what capabilities the PA should have. However, I have a feeling that they wanted to outspec the Rodecaster Pro more than they actually succeeded to cater for market needs. I would have easily sacrificed one of the six inputs in exchange for an extra Bluetooth channel, and in fact for multi-track recording via USB as well, and not only on the SD card. But to be fair, the file management on the Zoom P8 is a breeze, while on the Rodecaster, well, not so much. But enough of that. Let's look at the prices first. 809, 891, and a whopping 948 euros in exchange for convenience and a clean setup. Seriously, if these devices would be just 50, 60 euros cheaper, no one could beat them. Let's, however, make things even more complicated and add a third remote guest. This scenario, with three persons being present and three remote guests dialing in, is one of the two where the Rodecaster Pro comes out on top in terms of cost-to-value ratio, which it does surprisingly rarely, despite being one of the best and most convenient podcast-specific devices out there. Convenience comes at a price. As you can see, it has switched places with the Zoom Lifetrack L8, mostly because the L8 needs yet another iRig 2 adapter to accommodate for the third remote guests, and also a headphone splitter, as the third guest occupies a headphone out, which leaves only two free headphone channels for the people being present, but since we need three, a headphone amp is required. On third place is the only device for this scenario that does not have a built-in mix minus, which is the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK. And it does not have an on-off switch either, but that's beside the point. Here, to save some costs, I consider the third guest to be called via USB. Same applies to the fourth option, the Tascam Model 12. You'll need to add the Nyric tooth for the third remote guest, and the headphone amp as it only has two headphone ports. On side note, not only is the Tascam Model 12 the most expensive, it also is apparent that while it is an extremely capable device, podcasting was not the key focus during the design process, even if it is advertised for podcasters too. Unfortunately, the TRRS input with the mix minus does not make it a podcasting device alone, but I admit there are specific needs, especially if you're a musician, for which this device could be your first choice. In case you haven't noticed, the Zoom Portrack P8 has disappeared from the list. It was a surprise to me that it gets off so quickly, but I think it's a major design flow to occupy the TRRS input with a Bluetooth adapter so that you have to choose which one you want to use, which essentially drops the maximum number of remote guests from 3 to 2, which is especially painful when comparing it to the Rodecaster Pro. Also, we have reached the end of the capabilities with this setup for the Behringer Flow 8. It cannot host more, more than two remote guests, even if a fourth XLR input could serve a fourth person in the room. I also deliberately not included here the Zoom L12, even though it is fully capable to host three present and three remote participants. Wherever the Zoom L8 can do the job, I'm not mentioning it apart from some unique four remote guest scenarios later, as it would obviously cost more, in this case, 1,158 um, euros, as you'd need three IRX for all your remote guests. And speaking of prices, the listed setup cost 935, 979, 1,006 and 1,092 euros. Just for the sake of completeness, let's have a look at the scenario where we have four remote guests on top of the three persons being present even the Rodecaster Pro cannot handle this scenario. While, and it was a big surprise for me, the Zoom L8 still can, thanks to its dedicated TRRS mobile phone input with the built-in mix minus, and its three additional and individual configurable monitor mixes. I've already referred to my podcast on the Zoom L8 video, where it is explained in depth. As usual with the four remote guest scenarios, the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK, the Tascam Model 12, the Zoom Lifetrack L12 are the other options being capable of handling this many guests. This time, prices are all above 1000 euros, as you can see. And with that, we have closed the section with three people being present. We are stepping up to having four people in the room in the next video, eventually with up to four remote guests. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified on the upcoming videos and give a big old thumbs up to help this video rank a bit higher for those looking for help in this area.
Good luck with this setups. <laughs>